What's up guys, this is Rasim from RossmerTech.com. How you guys doing? Hopefully you guys are doing well. I'm doing well. Now in this video, we got a cool announcement towards the end. You guys are going to love the announcement. But this video is basically going to cover the benchmarks and the stress test results of our water-cooled Latte Panda. If you guys don't know, we water-cooled a Latte Panda a couple of weeks ago. In this video, we're going to go over the results to see how well it did. Now let's go over those results first. Now I have a folder here. Uh, where is it? Here. I call this one water-cooled. Let's say Panda benchmarks. So I have a bunch of images. Now the reason I'm using images, these are screenshots. These are screenshots of the Latte Panda. Now I couldn't use the capture software because uh, it, it'll it mess with the stress test and it will freeze a lot. So, and I didn't want to capture the screen because that, that, that didn't look good. So I figured I'd do a video like this where I show you the screenshots of all the benchmarks that I performed and they were pretty good. Now, this pie chart I'm going to show you guys towards the end, but let's look at the first one here. Now, this first one here, this is the temps before I water cooled the Latte Panda. This is what the temps are before water cooling and before running any uh, benchmarks. So you can see they're like in the upper 50s here. So we can close that. Now, this next one here. All right, guys, here I ran a uh, stress test. This is the ADA 64 stress test. This is before water cooling. And I ran it for five minutes, and these are the results after I ran it for five minutes. It got into the high 80s, so that's not good. You want to stay like it, under the 80s because once you get to the 80s, it's going to start thermal throttling, and your CPU clock speed is going to go down. So that's exactly what was happening here. The clock speed got up to like 15, 20. Now let's show you... Uh, the water cooled. This is water cooled. All right, so these are the temps of the Lassie Panda water cooled without any stress tests. So they got into like the low 40s. They didn't get higher than 45. Now let's close this. Now let's show you the temps of the Lassie Panda water cooled, but with a stress test. Again, we're using the Ada Fruit stress test, and it stayed in the 60s. It got as low as 56. So it didn't go higher than like 64, I believe. So that's pretty good. And and I ran the test for six minutes, more than five minutes. So and it was amazing. I was I was shocked that it was going to stay in the upper 60s. And remember, ADA 64 is an intense test that keeps your CPU, as you can see down here, at 100 for like as long as you want it. And it'll stress your CPU out and your CPU will get really hot. So it didn't go above, I guess, 64. So that's amazing. And that's Celsius, by the way. So let's just close this. I ran another benchmark. Well, the, the other ones weren't really benchmarks. That, that was a stress test. Now let's show you the benchmark I ran. I used something called, uh, I'm sorry, this is Sun Spider. This is like a multi-platform uh, web-based benchmark. Now I'm going to start using Geekbench in the future. I didn't use it for this video, but I started messing around with it. And it's pretty cool. And it's a multi-platform uh, stress test and benchmark. So it will be used in the future. And you can use it on Windows, on Mac, you can use it on your iPhone, your Android, and it runs the same benchmarks. So you can compare different devices to each other. So I thought that was cool. So again, I use SunSpider in this video. That's the URL for SunSpider if you want to check it out. Now let's see the SunSpider results right here. All right, guys, so these are the results for the SunSpider Let's See Panda benchmark. Now, the smaller the number, the better. And it took 805.4 milliseconds to complete. So that's pretty good compared to like the Raspberry Pis. All the previous Raspberry Pis, they blew them out of the water. So I'm going to close this here. All right, guys, so I have a meta chart here. I did the same test for all the other Raspberry Pis. I started with the original Raspberry Pi here. And the original Raspberry Pi was almost 20,000 milliseconds. It was crazy slow. And remember, it had a single core CPU. It took exactly 19,284.1 milliseconds to complete the operation for the original Raspberry Pi. Now we went down to the Raspberry Pi B+. Plus. There wasn't much of a difference between the Raspberry Pi B+, Plus and the original Raspberry Pi. Now the Raspberry Pi B+, Plus has a score of 18,831.1. Remember, the smaller the number, the better. This is how many milliseconds it took to complete the benchmark. So the faster you completed, the better the results. So not much difference between the Raspberry Pi and the Raspberry Pi B+. Plus. Now let's go to the Raspberry Pi 2. It's a huge difference, like night and day. So remember, they went from, I think, single core to to quad core. Or I think the Raspberry Pi B+, Plus was dual core. Then the Raspberry Pi 2 was quad core. So blew it out of the water. Now the Raspberry Pi 2 scored a 4,672.6, right? That's milliseconds. So... It's like maybe four or five times faster than the original Raspberry Pi, right? Well, let's go to the Raspberry Pi 3. I think it's like double the speed of the Raspberry Pi 2. It scored at 
891.1. That's how many milliseconds it took to complete the benchmark. Now finally, the Latte Panda. As you can see here, the Latte Panda on the bottom. It took only 805.4 milliseconds. It destroyed all the other Raspberry Pis. So I'm amazed. Remember, it has an Intel processor. It's a quad-core Intel processor. And again, I was amazed. So I have an Excel sheet that I'm going to keep all the like test results. So I'm going to make these charts whenever I, I compare it to another like single board computer. There will be a lot more single board computers in the future. I already got like three or four coming my way. Two of them that the companies have sent me and I haven't gotten yet. One of them is the upboard. I will be doing the banana pie. I will be doing a lot of boards like that. So I will be testing them out, comparing them to like the Raspberry Pis, Latte Pandas. I will be water cooling them as well. So don't, if you, got, if you guys like the water cooling, I'm going to still continue to water cool all those stuff. So that's pretty much it for this part. Now I have a cool announcement I want to show you guys. Now I'm going to take this box here. I brought this yesterday. Now you guys can probably read the box. It's a Xbox One. And this is a pre-owned Xbox One that I got from GameStop. Now, you guys are probably wondering, why am I showing you guys an Xbox One? The reason I'm showing you guys the Xbox One is because this is going to be my next big project. Yes, I will be water cooling the Xbox One. It, I'm freaking amazed that I even thought about this. I, I'm surprised that I didn't think about this earlier. Now, I'm really excited to start this project. I have a lot of parts that are already ordered. I, I ordered the water blocks. I ordered the, the tubing. I'm still going to use that uh, res pump combo. I don't know about the enclosure. I'm thinking about using... I'm just going to lift the camera up so you guys can see. I was originally going to use the enclosure in the bottom for our water-cooled cluster computer. I might just keep it for the water-cooled Xbox One. So I don't know. I might create a new enclosure. I, I really don't know at this time. So I ordered most of the parts. I still have a lot more parts to order. I have to think about the enclosure. And I'm also picking up a broken Xbox One. I want to pick up a broken Xbox One to just to open it up, see how big the parts are, measure it, see if I can build my own case, see if it will fit in the case I have there. I even thought about just keeping the original Xbox One case and see if I can like mount the reservoir on top, put a fan and the radiator in there. That would freaking be cool. If I could manage that, I would rather have the original Xbox One case, but just have like the giant uh, radiator and uh, reservoir on top. That, that'll look badass. Now, I brought a uh, water block. There is actually one water block that works with the uh, Xbox One. It's, it's pretty expensive. I forgot the name of it, but I will do a video where I show you guys all the parts. It was like $70. Really expensive, but it's all worth it. Now, the Xbox, uh, pre-owned Xbox cost me $239. Now, the broken Xbox I will buy will probably be like $50 or $60. And all the parts and everything, this whole project should, should be somewhere in like the seven or $800 range. I know you guys are thinking that's a waste of money. Now, it's not a waste of money for me. Remember, my channel is funding it. And I don't think it's a waste of money if you guys click on the video and you'll enjoy it. And if I enjoy creating it, definitely not a waste of money. I'm going to stop you guys before you even say waste of time, waste of money. I know a lot of you guys will definitely want to comment on it and say, oh, it's a waste of time again. But... Again, I, I, I like it. If you guys like it, then it's definitely not a waste of time. But yeah, stay tuned for that video pretty soon. I will be starting like gathering all the parts now. It, it's going to take a while, at least a week or two. I say more than a week. It should be a max three weeks. I want to finish it within two weeks, but I will be updating you guys at every step. If you guys want to get updates, follow me on my social media. The links are in the description. I'll like take pictures. For Instagram, I'll update you on my Twitter. So if you guys want to stay updated on all the stuff that I'm working on, follow me on all of my social media and you will be completely updated with what I'm doing. All right, guys, if you think the liquid cooled Xbox One is a cool project, like this video, then I know you guys are interested in it. All right, guys, so that's pretty much it for this video. If you guys like this video, please give me a like. If you want more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel. I'm Rasim from RossmartTech.com and thank you guys for watching.